So I made this uh, bicycle power meter for my automatic shifter and um, the goal of the project was to make it as cheap as possible. In the end it cost me around £15, although I did cheat a little because the two lithium ion cells that I'm using are out of a, an old phone. Um, recently I've been testing it against these Garmin Vector pedals. Um, I don't have the correct shoes, so that's why the cleat is in there, just to provide a flat surface. Um, the graphs that I've got from all the data logging show that the averages are consistently within around 5 watts of each other for the two different power meters, which I'm super happy with, considering that the pedals are a dual-sided, um, power meter. The homemade one is obviously single sided, it's just this right hand crank basically. So first let's go over the external parts of the power meter first that you can see. Um, this is the on off switch here. It, yeah, it has an on off switch because this version isn't really that energy efficient. Um, it uses around about 37 milliamps when it's running. It gives a good few hours runtime, but that's because it's got two phone batteries powering it, as you'll see later under here. So when it's turned on, the Arduino will first do three samples one second apart of the strain gauge value. Um, that will then enable it to zero the power meter out. So it's basically automatic zeroing on startup. Um, and here you'll see there's a little light flashing in there. That will only flash if that value stays within plus or minus one. So the resolution of this power meter is around about 150 grams. So that means if it's within plus or minus 150 grams. So as I press on the on the crank, the light will go off. Press on it, it goes off. All right, that's that part of it. I'll turn it off. Um, here is the NRF24 LO1 module antenna extension, which I put on, which seems to work fine. Um, half of it's within here, as you'll see. Um, going around to the other side, we've got under here is the amplifier. This is one here, which I use as a test one. Um, so basically, it's um, based on. It's an LF353 amplifier. I don't really know much about them. I just set up the resistors to give the right gain, which I believe is around 3000. Um, these are the wires that I used to use to connect the strain gauges. It used to be there. That's the um, two part glue that I used to um, cover them up. Um, I'm doing that differently now. Um, as I'll explain in a minute. Um, the strain gauges are arranged in a full bridge arrangement. Um, I'll put a little diagram of it on the screen now. I've got two for temperature compensation and two that do the actual measurement. So they're basically orientated 90 degrees to each other. Um, anyone who knows about strain gauges will, will probably know about that. Um, it seems to work reasonably well. Um, a little bit of variation due to temperature. Um, the strain gauges are in here, in this corner, which I thought would probably be quite a high stress area. So uh, I thought it would be the best place to put them and also quite well protected. Um, the strain gauges I'm using are tiny. Here's an example one here of focus. Not tiny. That's the the one I use for testing soldering. Um, strain gauges are covered with wax, like this, first, um, and then a two-part adhesive, and on top of that, some foil. I think that's about it to say about the outside of it. Um, now let's uh, take it apart. Um, I'll also show you some pictures of the strain gauges as I was gluing them on. I basically just use the cheapest 
super glue I could find um, to stick them on. I did sand the crank down first, um, as you'll see in the picture, and then just glued them on, basically. Um, it's based on a Arduino, and um, the code is used to do um, smoothing which is sampling at a rate of 1 kilohertz and the number of readings is 50 so 50 milliseconds um, of smoothing that then gives a value that's smooth that's the value from the amplifier um, it then samples that at a rate of 100 hertz for the actual um, calculation of the torque, the average torque for a rotation. Um, just get that's the bolts that secure the cover on for this um, stainless steel part that I made for housing everything. And then these bolts are the ones that used to be the attachment for the um, chain guard, which I'm still using the plastic around the edge. So that's the five bolts out. And then what I need is my cardboard support. that and then I can carefully this is why it's connecting the two parts move that down like that and take the cover off which underneath has a rubber sort of a seal it kind of works although I don't really use this much in really wet weather because somewhere, I don't know if it's the amplifier or the strain gauges, but water gets in and strain gauges are super sensitive to any sort of change and it kind of messes up the values a bit. So that's something I'll improve on in a later model. But this is basically the inside. Um, we have here, here are the two old phone batteries. Um, they're connected in series, so that gives the about eight volts. Um, over here we have the switch, the NRF module. Um, that's then connected round to the main brains of the operation, which is the little. Nano, Arduino Nano, which I've flattened out to make it fit. That's the connection to the NRF module, the SPI connection. Um, and then we have these four wires which go to the amplifier. The green is just battery voltage, um, so about 8 volts, so that's power supply for the amplifier. We've got white, which is the strain gauge voltage which comes back to the Arduino um, red is 5 volts that's from the Arduino then that's the voltage applied across the strain gauge um, bridge and black is obviously ground anyone who knows anything about power meters or has thought about making one will probably notice that there is no way of measuring RPM or cadence. Um, no read switch, no gyroscopic sensor or anything like that. Um, and I also I wanted this to be independent, a fully functional power meter that actually outputs power data. So obviously I need to measure cadence. And I thought the output from the strain gauges is, is basically a waveform. So if you can detect the rising edge of that, then time between the rising edges 
I can calculate from that cadence and it works very well most of the time apart from on really steep hills and I think it's to do with the fact that the weight on the pedals perhaps doesn't drop enough to kind of finish the one rotation in the as far as the code is concerned and start the next one, the next rising edge um, so occasionally you get this big spike in power but it, it doesn't happen that often so is it possible to make a really cheap power meter? yes but if you want 1% accuracy then buy an expensive one um, the next level I want to take this project to is to use one of these Blue Fruit Feather NRF52832 modules which is capable of transmitting ANT Plus and Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, it's also got a better resolution ADC, faster processor and onboard LiPo charging. So that's what I'm excited to do next um, to take the power meter project to another level. Um, and that's about it. Thank you for watching.